Hello, welcome to Knowledge Graphs, week six, intelligent applications with knowledge graphs and deep learning. I am Mahsa Lafayi. And I'm Anton. And we're going to take you through this notebook in which we will talk about link prediction. This will be the second Python notebook for week six and actually the very last notebook of this whole course. So in this notebook, we will use a Python library called AmpliGraph, and we will use a particular, a particular link prediction model from 2013 called TransE in order to show you how you can um, actually check all the triples in a knowledge graph, see if there are missing links, and find out what missing links you can actually add to this knowledge graph. TransE, as I mentioned, was um, proposed in 2013, and it's one of the mostly common, most commonly used uh, models for link prediction because of its simplicity and its good performance. Um, it is an embedding-based model which has a scoring function, and for every pair of entities, and for every relation that could come between these two entities to link the two, two entities together, mm -hmm. it creates a score and it gives each of these triples then a ranking. And um, for all the triples that are above a particular threshold, we can assume that probably those triples can be added to our knowledge graph to complete our knowledge graph. Okay, now let's see together how we can do this. Uh, first of all, please do not edit this file. You can make a copy of this file in your own drive and you can run the um, code snippets and you can also change your own uh, version of this file as you like, but this one is just for the uh, demonstration purposes. Okay, so first we need to install the libraries and we need to load our data set. Just uh, a side note that uh, there are some parts of this notebook that we have adapted from the AmpliGraph documentation. So um, if you want to load or save your model, we of course have to create a directory in our own Google Drive. And we call this kg-completion. So this is the place where we will save our embeddings later on after we train it so that we can load it for future use. And then we install the AmpliGraph uh, library. Please make sure that you put 2.0.0 so that we are using the same version because there are some methods that will not work in the lower version. And as of March 2023, this is the latest version of AmpliGraph. Yes. And aside from AmpliGraph, we will also be using NumPy and Pandas. Here we also check the version of the AmpliGraph to make sure we're all on the same page so that everything works with AmpliGraph 2.0. Yes. As with um, hands on 6.1, we will be loading the Game of Thrones data set. And here we see the head, relation, and tail. Now let's look at what it includes. Just to refresh our memory, so we have 2050 entities and the relations are the following we have 10 relations here now uh, I pass you on to Masa so she can talk about training and so on okay so as in any other machine learning framework we will start um, here with splitting our data into train and test sets so we, um, in, in particular here, we need to make sure that in our test set, in our train set, we have all of the entities represented at least one time. And that is because if we do not have an entity in the train set, then the model cannot generalize, cannot predict anything about this entity and the relations that could follow this entity on one hand. And if we do not have the entities in the test set, then the evaluation results we get are not very accurate because there are some missing entities and the model mm -hmm. is not being um, evaluated.
based on those missing entities. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to have all of the entities at least once appearing and represented in the train set and in the test set. And Ampligraph already has a method for this kind of division. It is called train test split no unseen. And um, we just do a division, the um, rule of thumb division mm -hmm. of 80% of the data into the train set and 20% in the test set. And here you can see the size of each of these sets, the tra tra train set and the test set, 2,540. Um, data points in the train set and 635 data points in the test set. Okay, next we want to select our model. Um, you know already we are going to use the trans E model for the training of our um, embedding vector. And Ampligraph 2 has a class for defining different um, knowledge graph embedding models. For example, trans E, complex, dist mod, so on and so forth. And we are sticking with the trans E model. So the class is called ampligraph.latent features. And from here, uh, sorry, the cl class is called the scoring based embedding model, which is inside ampligraph.latent features. And we just import this class. And here we have to specify a number of parameters. One mm -hmm. of them is K. Of course, we are starting with a seed um, so that we can replicate all of these again and get the same results. And um, <coughs> apart from that, we have the embedding size k. We have eta, which specifies the number of corruptions that are going to be generated per each pos positive triple that mm -hmm. we have. That is how the trans E model works. Can I add also something? Of because course. just a reminder from our lecture where we discussed the, long, the loss function, um, generating the negative samples is um, specified by this eta value. Exactly. So for each positive triple, we will here create five negative triples that will be penalized by mm -hmm. some function. And by these penalizations, the rankings will be um, actually determined. And the, um, ra the rankings will be improved according to the um, penalty. OK, and we have the scoring type, which is trans E in this case. Next, we have to define the loss and the regular, regu regularizers and also the optimizer. We are using the atom optimizer and we are using the default values for the, um, um, we're using learning rate, actually, um, 0.003 and some mm -hmm. default values for the other parameters for the loss function and also for the regularizer, just so that you um, see how parameters are defined here. We have some examples for the parameter assignment as well, but you can uh, refer to the documentation of Ampligraph to find out in more details what, what each of these parameters are. And finally, we instantiate our model. I have to run it. Thanks mm -hmm. for the reminder. And we train the model. Okay, so um, we have chosen the batch size of 100. That is yes. the number of data points that are given as input to the network at every pass. And we have chosen 200 epochs. These are also variables. Mm -hmm. So it is possible that if you choose a higher number of epochs, you will get better results because there will be more passes. There will be more mm -hmm. adjustments of the parameters according to the training data. And it's also, of course, possible to create a validation set on which you can make sure that you're not running into the problem of overfitting. And you could have done this in the same way as you did the split between the um, train and test set. A validation set could have been created in the same way. Mm -hmm. And then we would have made sure that um, our training is working not only on the training data, but also on unseen data in the validation set. And according to that um, criteria, we can choose the model. OK, now let's see how everything is going on here. It looks good. The, you can see the loss mm -hmm. is decreasing. That's a good sign. That means the model is getting better and better. And we are already at epoch 160 at least. Mm -hmm. Not much more to go. 
Yes, and uh, if you were to change the epoch, just make sure to look at the loss. If the loss suddenly flip-flops, then it means that you are trying to overfit the model. And you don't want that. Yeah, you don't want that. Okay, so we get to a loss of 7.45, which is, as far as we can see, the lowest. And um, I'm sure we got this from a much higher number. It was 20 plus, I think. We okay. started with 20 plus. So um, we can save the model. And later on, if we need to um, uh, reuse this model, we can use the um, method restore model in order to do that. And I am giving it the title best model dot pk1. Okay, so we have some extras here that Anne will go through. Yes, um, so we have been talking about embeddings. We just want to show you how the embeddings from trans e look like so without go looking at each and every number. So we will um, first try to use PCA so that the dimensions of our embeddings will be lower so that we can see it like in a 2D manner. And then we will use uh, sklearn clustering algorithm k-means. Now you don't have to um, uh, bother yourself with this. It's just a nearest neighbor algorithm so that we can see which embeddings or which entities are closer to each other. Okay. So this actually puts the um, entities <coughs> that are more similar into closer spaces. Yes, and we use the PCA so that our embedding space will be a lower dimension because how okay. big How big did we say? It is big. Yes, yeah, 200, we used 200, right? Yeah, I'm not sure. So but we can't have a what, space, v we can't visualize a space with 200 no, dimensions. <laughs> Okay, now let's visualize our embeddings. We will be using an additional library just so we can see the embeddings uh, related to the well-known entities in our data set. And then we just uh, use Seaborn, SNS, and Matplotlib to show our embedding space. Okay, now here we can see uh, six clusters, brown, purple, blue, green, orange, and so on. And we can see here already that the purple dots are the houses in Game of Thrones. And also here we can see that Marguerite Tyrell and Sansa Stark are closer to each other and also Cersei Lannister. They're the women around Joffrey Baratheon. So you can see some semantics already from the embeddings, right? Very interesting. Yeah. So now i am pass you on to Masa to talk about evaluating our model. Okay, now let's get back to the link prediction task and um, the evaluation metrics that are widely used for this task. There are three um, evaluation metrics that are commonly used. The first one is mean rank, which measures the mean of a vector of rankings. The second one is just a variation of the mean rank, but this time it's the mean reciprocal rank. It measures the mean of the reciprocal of elements of a vector of rankings. And the reciprocal um, is calculated so that uh, the metric is more robust to outliers. And then the last one would be the hits at n, like hits at 1, hits at 3, hits at 10. This uh, metric measures how many elements of a vector of rankings make it to the top n positions, to the top position, to the top three positions, or whatever the number of n is. Now, one um, specific thing in the machine learning part of the link prediction task to keep in mind is that th we need a filter in order to make sure that no negative statements that were generated during the corruption procedure are actually positives, are true triples that are mm -hmm. already in our data set. And, um, you know, so the, during the corruption procedures, we said already that there are a number of um, triples that are created by changing either the subject, the object, or the relation mm -hmm to some other value. And um, it could be that some of these automatically 
generated triples are actually true so that we already have them in our data set. Mm -hmm. So we create a positives filter simply by putting the train and test sets together by con concatenating everything that we have in our data. And we use this positive triple to remove the um, positive statements from the negative statements that are automatically mm -hmm. generated. Okay, and then we want to evaluate our model by this meta method evaluate using the filter, positives filter. And um, in the corrupt side, we can define whether we want to corrupt subject and object separately while evaluating. We can specify that with this comma between subject and object or simultaneously, and then we would have to change the comma to a plus. Or if we want to only corrupt subjects, or we only want to corrupt uh, um, objects or relations. OK, so um, this um, method, evaluate, will indicate the rank at which each of the test set triples were found when performing link prediction using the model that we have trained. And we want to evaluate the uh, performance of our model with the metrics that we have already told you about. The MRR score here would be 0 0.5, 0 0.05, hits at 10, hits at 3, and hits at 1. So these numerical metrics would be particularly useful when you want to compare one model, the performance of one model with the performance of another model. That's how and where you can make more sense of what these numbers actually mean when it comes to comparisons between different models. But to give you a more intuitive idea of the performance of the model that we have trained, now we will move on to predicting unknown relations and see what we can find out that was not already in the data. OK, so now we try to predict unknown relations between different entities. And here we are just giving a list of triples that are unseen. And we can rank this using our model and find out which of these triples the model can say with, uh, which of these triples actually tells us whether it's true or not according to the model that we have. Exactly. So let's just run this. And again, the positives filter, which Masa already described. We just want to make sure that this list up here does not include triples that are already in our data set. OK, then we rank our sample data up there. And then we say we predict which of these triples are true, depending on the results. And then we use um, a SciPy special XBIT method so that our scores will be between 0 and 1. So this is just a sigmoid function. So we can make heads of tails of the score. And let's see what it says here. OK, so if you can see here, this was the score. Um, to make heads of tail of this, we used x bit so that the values here are between 0 and 1. And we can, OK, it says, uh, I don't know who, ha what House Hut Hutchison is, but look at the rank number 2. It said that Jorah Mormon was a spouse of Daenerys Targaryen. Uh, just to correct you here, the rank would be actually 142. Yes. But yes, so yes, that but it's the, the second, second one. in our list. Yeah, in our list. The second in our list. Uh, they were not really married, but they were close to each other, I would say. And here, but this is true. Missandei's spouse, Grey Worm, is true. But it's up, it's high up on our list. So our model is not perfect, but it was still able to get some truths out of our uh, unseen triples. So. It's okay. pretty cool. Exactly. Thank you very much. And that was it for link prediction. Um, I hope you find out more truths um, about the Game of Thrones. And I hope you enjoyed the last hands-on in Knowledge Graphs.